and welcome. So what I want to do uh, with, with the next 45 minutes is explore how we um, use Feng Shui, but getting back to where Beth started, it's about humans, so having a humanistic approach and seeing if we go macro and micro, what, what happens, what, what do we discover and what kind of connections can we make? So, as we've seen, oh, excuse the drawings, I know I should have put Simon Brown aged um, eight and three quarters at the bottom, but I tried them out on an iPad and it's early days as you can see, but uh, um, anyway, so, so as we said before, uh, we think of ourselves as living between the earth and the, and the heavens or the sun. So uh, in the trigrams, we humans are the middle line and therefore we are a kind of energy system that exists in time and space between those two forces. So in um, China, then the idea is that we have energy coming up from the earth and at the same time we have energy coming from the sun down through our body. And if you just leave a bowl of water outside, after a while it'll get green algae growing because of the sun and the water. It's, it's what forms life, it's what we need for life. So how does this work? Uh, in the meridian system we have three long meridians that are really fed by the sun and uh, those are what we call the yang meridians. So the bladder would come all the way down the back um, and in uh, five elements that's the water energy and so it's yang water so it's a little bit like when we say behind us is a tortoise for protection and security it's the same element for that meridian coming all the way down the back and it's taking energy from the sun bringing it down the back to our to the earth to our feet to our little toe then we have the gallbladder meridian, they all start around the eyes, so this is more to the side, coming down the side of the body, down to the feet. Gallbladder is a wood energy, so in Feng Shui terms it would be like the dragon, which is wood, but then we'd have the tiger, which is, is, isn't wood, so it doesn't quite fit on that one. And then interestingly, from just below the eyes, coming all the way down the front of the body, we have the stomach meridian and this is where it's a different viewpoint than probably in Feng Shui. So in Feng Shui we would think of it as fire and the phoenix coming out in front of us where the stomach meridian, again yang, sun energy, coming down the front of the body, our stomach is, is basically the, the main driver in life. So if we were crocodiles and we just eaten we're, we're fine lying in the sun and humans can be around, we don't care, it doesn't matter. We'll stay there till we're hungry and then we'll go and look for food. And I guess we're a bit similar, or, or I am anyway, I'm a bit of a lazy person, so until the bank account empties or whatever, then I have to go and get work and do stuff. So, so the stomach meridian is that hunger, it's the driver in life. And in the low shoe, we could put it in the center, which would mean that the center of a space can have that feeling of hunger. We, we might keep it a bit empty because if we're a bit hungry, we tend to do more in life. If our stomach region is full, then we're on the sofa fiddling around playing games or watching television and so on. So being a little bit hungry. So those are the three long yang meridians with the sun's energy. Interestingly, Normally we think of yang as, yang as moving up, but actually they're going down and, and it's always been a big challenge for acupuncturists, why would that be? And we have to think of what kind of energies in the meridian, which is the sun in this case, is more important than the direction, according to um, traditional Chinese medicine. Then we have three meridians coming up the inside of the body, from the feet and they come up generally different versions but generally to the middle of the body so interesting the sun goes all the way from the head to the earth and into the earth the yin earth meridians earth energy meridians are coming up to the middle and just stay there 
So they are um, kidneys, uh, go, uh, li sorry, kidneys, liver, and spleen meridians. And then we have, so, so far we've covered water, wood, and earth. So the remaining ones is metal and fire. Again, interesting reflections for us in Feng Shui because they're all on our arms and the lungs and the heart are kind of moving organs, expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. So yin and yang's going on all the time. And therefore, it makes perfect sense that those meridians are on our arms. So if I'm like this, sun energy is coming down the back and we could say some up energy is coming here, but then I can move my arms the other way. So yin yang, and if I coordinate it with my breathing, breathe in, breathe out, I've got a sort of yin yang rhythm going on. And I can try it the opposite way around and see what happens. I could imagine I was pushing something up, breathing out. How does that feel? And each way I'm adjusting the energy from the sun and the earth on the meridians. So if we were transferring that back into Feng Shui, it would suggest that the south part of our home and the west part of our home need this kind of breathing, changing, moving energy. If we're going to take the human body energy system and apply it to a house. Does, are you okay so far? Makes sense? Okay. Then so basically we have a, a lung meridian and a large intestine meridian, both metal. And you can try it now, just touch your fingers together and, and you're making a nice loop of this metal energy. So we think of it as an inward, inner strength kind of energy. And therefore, perhaps if we want to develop the inner strength, uh, put your hands just on your lap, but keep your finger and thumb together and close your eyes for a moment. Just start breathing more deeply so you can feel the air in your nose. And then just try and work out which nostril is feeling cooler as you breathe in. Which nostril is feeling warmer as you breathe out. And maybe you can locate a cool spot near the front of your nose or near the top. And maybe you can even feel the air coming into your nose. So concentrate on the tip of your nose. Does it feel cooler as you're breathing in? And just notice how you're feeling for a moment. And then open your eyes. So hopefully you could feel some shift in energy, something change, just with that very short moment. So we've got, these fingers are all fire, and these two are metal. And then we can adjust things. So a lot of Tai Chi is about moving energy in the meridians, and a lot of it is using the arms to do that. Um, another thing that comes from Chinese medicine, this is meant to be a fetus, in case you're wondering. And uh, um, uh, so when we were forming, all our organs were forming, lungs, heart, all these different things, we had a physical structure, we had a, a basic bone structure. And so if I'm standing sideways to you, if my hands are around here as my heart's forming, then we relate this area to the heart. So, which is why we have actually four fire meridians in our hands, and this area relates to the heart. Um, very good acupressure points or acupuncture points in the wrist for the lungs. So here's the lungs forming. Here they are in my wrist. They're right next door, so they're forming together energetically. Move down, elbows, we could say colon, large intestine. So lots of good points on here for the colon. Then we look at the knees, somewhere around our middle organs, liver, spleen, stomach, lots of good points in there uh, for in, on our knees. And then our feet would be somewhere near our bladder and reproductive organs. So again, look at the acupuncture chart, loads of great points for any issues with those parts of our body. 
Um, so a lot of these things are really, really simple and obvious when you start to look at how they develop. If you just look at the acupuncture chart, it seems a bit meaningless, and w w why is that there? But, uh, but the reasoning behind it is, is always uh, very clear. Um, the Earth going back to our earth and sun, the earth has a mi microbiome. Are many people familiar with it? It's, it's the biggest sort of thing in science now that the bacteria, funguses and viruses communicate on the surface of the earth and adjust the earth's surface in a way that allows seeds to grow, plants to grow and so on. However, our skin also has a microbiome of its own. So there's a whole ecosystem going on on your skin. Uh, there are funguses everywhere, but sometimes there's a lot of them, so we get some kind of uh, fungal infection, we call it, but they're there all the time and we need them. Same with the viruses and so on. In Chinese medicine, the outside skin and the lining of the lungs and the lining of the intestines is seen as one piece of fabric. It's just one piece of material. So I can breathe in air, but it's not really inside me till it goes through the lining of the lungs into my blood. Or I could eat something, but it's not really inside me unless it goes through the lining of my intestines and gets into the blood. Does that make sense? So what we're looking at is the outside skin, lungs, and large in, well, intestines in general as one piece of fabric, but modern science is telling us that that's also the same on the surface of the earth. So the surface of the earth is like one skin with the whole microbiome going on. Then we have our outside skin, but we also have two inside skins. So I don't know if you work with children, very, very common asthma, and then have a look at their elbows and there's eczema. Um, and it's often on the lung meridian too. But what that would tell us going back to what Beth was saying, that if, it's, if we've got the outside skin and the lungs, we should really then look at the intestines, what's happening there. And of course, the, the sort of most common remedies now are not to have dairy food and either gluten-free or wheat-free diets, and, and it often clears up. So we're changing the skin of the intestines, which is feeding back into our lungs and outside skin. All right, so far? Yeah. So, so I've been working a little bit with a um, clinic, uh, and uh, it's been around for a while now, but it's still emerging science. But so a lot of problems seem to clear up with people who have IBS or any intestinal problems by taking uh, uh, the stool of a healthy person and then implanting it into the intestines of the unhealthy person and letting those bacteria start to populate the intestines. And it's, it's kind of uh, where it's all going is that basically the idea is that if our own bacteria, viruses and funguses are happy because of our diet and we need some soil to feed them, so keep the skins on the vegetables, don't wash them too much, then we're happy. So their mood seems to affect our mood. And, and you mentioned people overeating with the earth energy. So sometimes if we have enough of a certain kind of greedy bacteria, we're feeling full, but you know, the temptation to open the fridge again and, and have just one more piece of chocolate or whatever it's going to be is really strong. But now the thought is that it's those greedy bacteria that are telling us to do that. And to a certain extent, they have a lot of control over our own moods and thinking and behaviours. And it happens the other way around. If we get stressed, they, they tend to go quiet and, and, uh, and, and they realise that their host is in danger, so they start to contract and, and be more careful. Um, OK, so we're 70% water. It's not our water, it's coming and going. We're drinking, breathing in water or breathing out water, going to the toilet. And that's most of what we are. And we live in an environment that's a water-based environment. There's humidity in the air, rivers, oceans, rain, clouds, etc., etc. And we're just passing the water around. So we borrow it for a while. 
uh, and maybe recently it's been through plants or trees or fish or, or animals or whatever we want, and then we're going to give it back. So most of what we are is actually water, bacteria, viruses, fungus. None of those are ours. There are other life forms. Uh, the bit that's really us is, is tiny. So the, all the old traditions, the Zen Buddhism, the Taoism, this idea of trying to let go of the little bits of us that we think are important to us um, and just concentrate on the idea that we're in the flow of water, if you like, is um, very refreshing sometimes and gets us out of a lot of uh, upsets and you know, mental health issues and so on. It's, but again, the water that's inside us at the moment is contained within a, a bag, which is our skin. So essentially we're bags of water wandering around with some viruses and bacteria in. <laughs> and, and, and we think it's special, but, which is great, because we are. Same time, we're breathing. So we have a symbiotic relationship with the trees outside. They're producing oxygen. We're breathing it in. We're giving out carbon dioxide. They're taking that in. And, and if we look at Feng Shui, the words wind, water, you can see that probably it's originating or alluding to this idea that it's all about the water and the air. And that's basically what we are, that it's a symbiotic or it's, it's, we're just part of the whole. Does that make sense? Nothing special about us at all um, uh, in that sense. And then, um, okay, so we talked about this, but I want to go on to something about cells. I don't know if anyone's read the book Biology of Belief, Bruce Lipton. Um, it's, uh, I'm not saying that he's got the answers for everything, but it's an interesting insight into our, our cells and how they respond. His main claim is that it's not the DNA of the cell that matters, it's the membrane, it's the skin of the cell and how it reacts to its environment. So our cells adopt to their environment through their membrane. The DNA only becomes active in cell reproduction and it's only, if you like, in epidemiological studies, the triggers that might cause cancer and other things only happen when we're in, a, in an extreme stress situation. So they get switched on and then cells reproduce using the DNA that now has these switches on and then we get different cancer cells or, or whatever it is developing. Otherwise, if we can keep our cellular environment okay, then we're fine. We don't switch them on and those cells will reproduce just as normal healthy cells. So he says that a lot of the um, factors, and, and it's borne out with most research, is that stress and what goes on in our head is upsetting the cells more than anything else. So the environment the cells are in changes more by what we think about and, and, and whether we get stressed or not than anything else. So I, I come from a kind of healthy food background with macrobiotics, so that was quite challenging for me for a while, but, but I think he's probably right and, and the research is correct that the stress does change us so much and our immune system especially, that, that there's something to that. Um, so, so we have trillions of cells in our body, but they're life forms in themselves. So if you think of a human body, we've got all these little cells everywhere, and they, they live, they, they look after themselves, they reproduce, in a similar way that we have for how many billion people on the planet, and somehow we have to live together. If our own cells start fighting each other, we're in trouble. It's not going to be a happy place inside our skin. Um, just as if we go to war, it's, it's not great. It's, it's mutually destructive and we harm the environment that we live in. Um, okay, so this is a, a person in there home. So what we're looking at in Feng Shui, we have cells with a skin and then we have a body with a skin and then we wear clothes. So we, we humans have extra skin, second skins, which we change a lot, so more frequently than snakes. So we, we, um, 
we can go home and put something else on and we tend to feel different straight away. The clothes make a difference. But then we're in another skin, which is the walls of this room, and we spend a lot of time in that skin. And then beyond that, we have the skin of the whole building. We could say there's a, a sort of a boundary to London, which would be another skin. And then we have the planet, which could be another skin. And so it goes on. But we can keep going down because even inside the skin of the cell, there's a, a lot of the mitochondria and the DNA, and they all have their own skins too. So we can keep going smaller and smaller. So it's a bit like Russian dolls. We're focusing largely on our own skin and, and the skin of the room in Feng Shui. But it, I think it's good for us to go down a little deeper, dig deeper and look at the cellular skins and their environment and what happens. So the classic, uh, the classic claim is that if you have a goldfish and it's not well, what do you do? Do you take it out and start doing surgery and things or do you just change the water? Well, most people are going to change the water and then hope the fish gets better. So, same thing, cells, if their environments change, they get better. But then, if that reasoning carries forwards, then humans feel better when their skin is engaging with a more healthy environment. So, if we can change the environment we're in, just like changing the water for the goldfish, we start to feel different either on the cellular level or a whole person level or in other ways. So how do we do that? Well, then we're in, in our house skin in Feng Shui. We're looking at what can we bring in? What can we do? And um, one, one uh, easy way to go forwards with that question really is look at what's inside us. So we said most of us is water well, then water around us becomes important. They're communicating. What else is inside us? We have proteins and all these kinds of things, which will also be in plants. So if this room was full of plants, I don't know if you've been to Kew Gardens and inside some of their greenhouses, but it really is an energy-changing thing. You know, everyone must feel different after 10 or 15 minutes. So, so we're then using something that's inside us, but positioning it around us. What would be other things that we have a lot of inside us that we can use outside? Any thoughts? Bacteria. Well, yes, bacteria, so don't clean your house too much. Um, uh, uh, bacteria, we need it, you know, look what happened to Howard Hughes, he lived in a sterile environment, and then, you know, he, he got a lot of infectious problems. Our immune system basically stops working. Um, and now we're saying that most allergies come from eating sterile foods because they're too clean. We're not exercising our immune system, which is mostly in our intestines, and, and therefore it starts to behave inappropriately. But, but, so we have a lot of salt in our, in our liquids, which acts as an electrolyte, so we could argue that that's carrying qi around the body. So having salt around us strategically placed is another way we can have that symbiotic relationship. So in this part of this drawing we have some salt and then iron. We have iron in our blood, very important. If we become anemic it's, it's big problems. So something with, with iron and metal is then relating to us inside. Obviously you can go a lot further than this uh, having fruit and vegetables in your kitchen out and about is, is great. By the way, one of the biggest problems we probably have since the 50s is, is refrigeration. If you keep food outside, it collects bacteria, spores in the air will start to feed on the skins of the food, develop a whole ecosystem there. Then when we come to eat it, it, it feeds and populates the bacteria already in our intestines. If we keep stuff in the fridge, it's, it's generally too cold. They go to sleep and they become inactive. Um, but anyway, we could argue it's good Feng Shui to have it out there. So last bit is to quickly say, so here's the low shoe we use in Feng Shui a lot. Um, and um, I'm not going to bother explaining this, but I think everyone gets the idea. Then what we can say is, let's connect it. 
So it's essentially a clock, so we can go around the low shoe with the times of day. It's a calendar, so it becomes a lunar calendar, but also a seasonal calendar. And it's a map because we have the directions. So it's one of the few ways that I know of that a culture has connected time and space in such a sort of easy way, a, a common sense way. Um, and if we took the low shoe and put it on our body, if I printed off the paper and, and put it on myself like this, you'll see that the organs that are used in their right places in Chinese medicine more or less line up with what we see on our body. So our heart would be at the top, we'd have our liver and gallbladder coming up this side, we'd have the bladder at the bottom, which would be the north in, in Feng Shui, and then we'd have our stomach and spleen here. The only one that doesn't work so well is the lungs, which would be up here, but as you can see, that the metal. But we could at least say the diaphragm, which is moving them, is around there. And then we have the colon, large intestine. So, and the small intestines in the middle. Um, based on what I said about the, the stomach meridian, do you remember? The hunger driving forwards. I would probably put the stomach in the centre for this. I'm showing you what the, the accepted um, Chinese medicine layout would be. But I think this, this energy here is, is, is good for the, the forward moving energy. So at least as the meridian, I would put it there. Um, you all right so far? So what that's suggesting is that we can look in different parts of the house in terms of the organs that this represents. So if someone was having high blood pressure, it would be interesting to see what's going on in the south part of their home. How's that affecting them? Is there anything interesting happening there? It's a, a prompt. It's not necessarily going to be the answer to everything, but it's certainly a question worth having. Um, and then we can look at uh, emotions. So in Chinese medicine, the meridians all have emotions that go with them. So if we had a client who was feeling, let's say, very anxious, we would look in the north, the water element, and start to see what would happen there. What could we do? But of course we can transfer it into time. So anxious, north, it's also going to be night time and winter. And I think you can imagine how these things came up. You know, if we were out and about in the woods in the night, we're much more likely to be anxious than if we're in, out and about in the woods in the daytime. So um, the time and space aspect comes in. But then we can start to look at, well, how could we also use time as uh, in the previous talk, we were looking at time relationships with different things in our lives. So, so we can then use the time as well. And then uh, we can look at the meridians. We can superimpose the meridians into the low shoe. And so remember fire we said was arms, heart, but that's a moving energy. It's a pumping energy. So then south part of a house, then maybe we need to allow some space for that. Maybe we, we want some movement in that part of our house. This, the west part of our house, would be a breathing energy, according to this. So the west part would be interesting in terms of can we kind of help our house breathe? Can we help the space refresh and change energy? Um, but you'll find that it correlates very well to the seasons at the same time. So we could say that um, when it gets cold in the winter, our body naturally tries to reduce liquids. We, we want to dehydrate a bit. They're not useful in cold weather. So the kidneys and bladder become more active. They're more important. Then as things warm up, you know, around March, April, people are detoxing, losing weight. You know, it's all liver kind of things that we want to do. Then we come up to the exercising. People are looking after their hearts. They're running in the parks in the summer. Things are happening. Then afternoon, 
luckily I'm not talking after lunch, but um, for those who are, it's a difficult time because our blood pressure is coming down, blood sugar is dropping, hard to keep everyone awake, um, and, and so on. So it's, it's, it's a very nice model for being holistic with people and connecting Feng Shui to the human cells. But, and I just want to leave it with this last point, which is that um, as humans, we, we have brains, and those brains are conditioned by our, our life so far. So the cultures we're born into, the school we went to, the friends we have, the parents we have, kind of condition our minds into certain ways of thinking. And the, the current science idea is that that's done by neural pathways. So before you could ride a bicycle, you had no neural pathways to, to ride a bicycle. You get on your bicycle and fall off, get back on, fall off, and you're slowly developing neural pathways. And then at some point, oh wow, I can actually ride this thing. And now I do have the neural pathways. And they never go. You can go back to but But if you continue, you'll build them up even more. And you, you can ride around, look, mum, no hands and all that, um, and, and go up mountains and across rough terrain. And you're fine because you have loads of these neural pathways now. You're really good at it. Um, same with swimming and everything else. But if we take that idea into other things that are more conceptual, like Feng Shui and everything else, uh, and then the risk we have is that we condition our mind in a way that's built upon constructs. Does that make sense? Man-made ideas. So I think that with all these things, everything I've said, we have to take it as an interesting possibility. It's definitely not reality. It's because reality is what we can see and, and touch and feel. But Beyond that, the things that we make up in our heads is um, much more in the domain of mental exercise and trying to get interesting ideas, reflections, possibilities and so on, of our own. So for me, it's, this sort of thing is more about sparking ideas off in your brains, out of which you'll develop your own neural pathways around it and thoughts and ideas, but not to buy into my neural pathways. Does that make sense? It's, so, so if we have one lifetime, and I don't know how many years you think you have left, but you know, hopefully it's a long time, the point more is how far can we go with that in developing this kind of body and brain we, we, we ha inhabit? What can we do with it? That's the big question, so that when we come to the end of it, we're kind of feeling like, okay, well, I did everything I wanted, I developed myself in all these interesting ways, and that was great. But to, to get there, it's more a question of self-development and growth, in, in my humble opinion, than other people's ideologies. Because none of us want to live someone else's life, so we, we have to keep coming back and if we're being Zen and, and Taoist about it, we have to keep take, declutter our minds, taking out everything for a while, and then we can bring it back in if we want, but at least have that, those moments where it's just me. I, I don't have everyone else's ideas whizzing around my head. And, and that way I feel that we can probably have those unique kind of revelations and insights and lines of inquiry that really are us as a person. So I'll end on that note. So any questions before we break for lunch? Yes. Oh yes. Mm. Yeah, and that has a lot about the microbiome in that. Yeah, it's a fantastic book. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Are you okay? So why don't we, we've got a few minutes, why don't we just try stretching some of these meridians and see what happens. If you just want to stand up. 
and maybe I have to move out of the um, chair bits into other spaces. And we can just begin with our bladder meridian. So we can do a big stretch up and then slowly come down and just feel it. It's probably in the back of your legs. Calf might feel it in bits of your back. If you want to really stretch it, you can bend your knees, fold your hands behind and then straighten your knees. And then we can come up. And then we can do our gallbladder meridian. So now we're onto the wood energy. Nice long stretch down the side. And the other side. And stomach's quite difficult. The easiest thing is if you hold on to a chair or something, take your leg, push your knee back as far as you can, and look up at the sky. Try and make a nice curve and arch. And do that with the other leg. Yes. And then we can... Uh, if you've got enough space, you can just kind of do a, any kind of open leg stretch. I know it's not inappropriate clothing, so don't rip your skirts or trousers. But uh, you get the idea. We, you can try it at home when you're in a better... But you want to feel a nice stretch. All, you, you'll stretch all those three meridians on the inside. Um, lots of arm stretches. We can do this triple heater, which I didn't mention, which is our metabolism... And here we can do, this will do the heart and small intestines. Do the lungs. Breathe deeply into your chest. Very good. And then we can just do, let's do a little exercise. Uh, if you have your feet about shoulder width apart, bend your knees slightly. And we'll just give our hands a nice rub. And then uh, just shake them out. A good shake. Um, and then we can just start to feel with our hands. Just keep moving and see if you can pick up that feeling of energy, that magnetic sensation between your hands. You can try very close together or further away. And then we can just do, start to do, like in Tai Chi, something like this. So palms up, turn over, palms down. And you might feel that it's a bit easier one way. So there's a slight draft against your hand. When it, so where I am and around me, the energy is going up, it's easier. And then I can feel a slight resistance, like a little wind against my palms easier and then it depends on your own energy but also it'd be different in the room but could you feel either up or down around yeah how's it where you guys are cool. <laughs> um, okay so we can do that and then we can try let's with the windows might be a good one but sometimes with the door we can try is the energy coming in through the windows or going out so where I am, there's a strong flow in from the window, but again, it could be that in that part of the room the energy is going out, but we can just see what you can feel. The people by the door might pick up more of the energy that's relating to the door. Very good. Okay. So, um, so obviously we can pick up the energy of a home in, in, with our own bodies and, and use that. All right, so if you want to sit down, um, 
Vicky, do we need to say where the lunch is or anything? Yeah. Okay. And where where do we go? Just outside. Just outside, okay. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much. That was great and enjoy that. <laughs>